I discovered that Mary Wollstonecraft lived and worked in the same neighborhood as me and my family, a raft of creative practice opened up. My kids attended Newington Green Primary and the school librarian gave me a local history publication by Pat Haynes. His little book mapped the heritage to be found on Newington Green. Wollstonecraft was born in Spitalfields and travelled widely, staying in London, Ireland, Portugal, visiting Norway and Sweden, and notably Paris during the French Revolution. She is considered to be one of the first women travel writers and set up a school for girls in 1784. Amy, I'd like you to get ready to show a very short film um, and I'll just say a little bit about it. In the autumn of 2018, we bought the multimedia play Wollstonecraft Live by Carty Fine, back by popular demand. This dramatised rehearsed reading was one of the last five performances in the meeting house before the Heritage Lottery refurb. To set the scene, let's watch the short film. Thanks, Amy. Wollstonecraft. should not one woman acknowledge that she can take more exercise than another? Or in other words, that she has a sound constitution? And why to damp innocent vivacity? Is she darkly to be told that men will draw conclusions which she thinks little of? Let the libertine draw what inference he pleases. But I hope that no sensible mother will restrain the natural frankness of youth by instilling such indecent cautions. Women ought to endeavor to purify their heart. But can they do so when their uncultivated understandings make them entirely dependent on their senses for employment and amusement? When no noble pursuit set them above the petty vanities of the day or enables them to curb the wild emotions that agitate a reed over which every passing breeze has power? To gain affections of a virtuous man, is affectation necessary? <laughs> to gain affections of a virtuous man, <laughs> affection, virtuous man, <laughs> of a virtuous man, to gain affections is affectation necessary? Weakness may excite tenderness and, and gratify the arrogant pride of man. <laughs> arrogant pride of man. <laughs> of man. Weakness may excite tenderness and gratify arrogant pride, but the lordly caresses of a protector will not gratify a noble mind that pants for and deserves to be respected. Fondness is a poor substitute for friendship. A noble mind that pants for and deserves to be respected. Fondness is... But the lordly caresses of a of a protector will not gratify a noble mind that pants for and deserves to be respected. Fondness is a poor substitute for friendship. Here, here, here. Here. It, it appears to me impossible that I should seek to exist, or that this active, restless spirit, equally alive to joy and sorrow, should be only organized dust, ready to fly abroad the moment the spring snaps, or the spark goes out, which kept it together. Surely something resides in this heart that is not perishable, and life is more than a dream. Thanks very much, Amy. Okay, so um, this film 
was projected onto the walls of St Pancras uh, Church to celebrate Mary Wollstonecraft's 260th birthday. And it was um, played on a loop and the site where it was projected was carefully chosen. By making this link across different places yeah. and places between the church where Wollstonecraft married William Godwin, for example, and was later buried, and the life and time she had here on Newington Green, our audience is encouraged to make new connections. By signalling to the mobility of people's lives, moving between place and space, this link encourages ownership of her important legacy. You will have noticed Pew 19 in the film. So um, that is where Mary Wollstonecraft sat. And now three performers were cast as Wollstonecraft and speak fragments from her writing. The cut and rewind you heard point to the role of recording and sharing information, reminding us of the innovations print brought in enabling information to be shared widely in the form of pamphlets, etc. At the time, Wollstonecraft was earning her living as a writer. By casting three performers to play Wollstonecraft, multiple versions and ways to know her are invited. Did you notice the woman sitting on the bench at the end of the film? She reminds me of Wollstonecraft, who walked across the green listening to the birds and watching the animals playing. Using a Brechtian style, we deconstruct our performances and film to make these and many more points and show about how her story, her story is produced. Going on now to the Wollstonecraft app, Amy can share the app with you. And um, as she sets that up, I can tell you a little bit about it. So this is a special app that in 2019, Heritage Lottery funded fragments and monuments to produce. And we did that with Scary Little Girls, which is a um, feminist performance hub local to Newington Green. On this app, you can access our audio walk guide, especially created podcasts, videos, including public reaction to the audio walk, which is a part of Stoke Newington Literature Festival. There's educational material, interviews with the artists and a curated archive of fragments and monuments, performance and film, living monuments work is all here. And if we just show the menu, which is up in the uh, right hand corner, that's the contents of the app with some specially created podcasts and uh, great um, content. Living Monuments methodology shares something new with the archive. So this app, this walk app does this, adding to the story. On the app, you can find a PDF of our limited edition art book, sharing the ways we celebrate Wollstonecraft made with artist Tay Ho. So now coming back to me, um, I'll show you the real book. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so we've got a copy of the real book here. And um, this book has been donated to the um, uh, meeting house. And it's exactly the same size as Wollstonecraft's famous treaty of vindication of the rights of women. By the way, Hackney Archive has an original copy of um, uh, vindication of the rights of women. We curated an exhibition for Hackney Museum and displayed the original edition of Vindication with this new publication. So both publications, the 18th century and the 20th century one, are cheek by cheek in Hackney archive, linking our 18th century neighbor to the 21st century. In this book, the bio we selected to share was researched by performer Di Sherlock for her role playing Wollstonecraft. And I'm going to read that to you now. I am an 18th century feminist writer and mother of Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein. I was born in Spitalfields, London, but my father turned to drink after losing the family fortune and scraping a living as a farmer in Essex. 
Yorkshire and Wales. Together with Fanny Blood, I ran a school on Newington Green, where I was soon welcomed by Dr Price into the local circle of dissenters. The school folded when Fanny got married. After a spell as a governess in Ireland, I was befriended by Joseph Johnson, who set me up with a job and lodgings. My masterpiece, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, published in 1792, was a fiery feminist polemic railing against the bitter bread of dependence, which kept women either domestic slaves or alluring mistresses. In a time when they were denied civil, political and sexual rights, my demands that women be restored to their lost dignity and labour prompted Walpole to call me a hyena in petticoats. In my private life, I, I opted for tumultuous passions as opposed to the cold dictates of prudence, which led to a disastrous relationship with the American Gilbert Imlay. The birth of our daughter Fanny while alone in Paris during the revolution, which I also documented and my account formed the base of Carlyle's French Revolution 40 years later and a suicide attempt off Putney Bridge. I later married philosopher William Godwin and died a few days after giving birth to Mary, Mary Shelley. Okay, so that's terribly sad. And in the same art book, we've got a, um, a description of um, a Vindication of the Rights of Women. So we've paired the two books, the original and the new book. And this cover is from the original. I'm just going to read you a brief description of Vindication. This book is considered to be the starting point for writing on the position of women across the world. A Vindication of the Rights of Women is on the curriculum for schools and universities globally and continues to be an inspiring read. Mary Wollstonecraft advocates the end of monarchy, the end of enslavement and a serious consideration for the rights of children. She believed that the liberation of women will in turn liberate humanity. In this way, Mary Wollstonecraft is a key contributor to human rights on the world stage. So that's all on the app and um, you can download it to your phone and um, it's a great thing at the moment during lockdown because you can go with a friend or you can do it at home um, or you can uh, do it on your own, on the green. Um, and particularly if Lizzie's is open, you can get a coffee at the same time. So that's walking and um, mobility and uh, linking for Mary Wollstonecraft. And she was a really kind of, um, she was a journey woman. She moved around, she had a global perspective. So uh, about 10 years ago, Mary on the Green campaign started as a local campaign and a part of the Newington Green Action Group. And this was to do with the regeneration of the green, um, which has been an ongoing and long project and increases the footfall and business uh, on the green. You may remember the Stewie stencil on the side of the meeting house. Lots of screen prints of the stencil were sold to raise money for the Mary Wollstonecraft Memorial. And I've got a banner here, which Stewie um, made for processions, uh, which you might remember was um, big processions across uh, the United Kingdom a few years ago to celebrate uh, the women's franchise to vote. After a process of community outreach and consultation, contemporary artist Maggie Hambling was selected to produce a sculpture for Mary Wollstonecraft on the green, and that was launched last year. Many of you will have had the opportunity to visit the green, and some of you will be planning a visit to see this controversial and exciting public artwork. There are many ways to celebrate hidden and erased legacies. After Wollstonecraft um, died, her grieving husband 
William Godwin quickly wrote a memoir detailing Wollstonecraft's thoughts, writings and passions. This was all too much for her readership and her audience and her legacy was erased. Her books were left unpublished and her life ransacked. Her insistence though on usefulness and dissent, debate and the importance of human rights couldn't be more relevant today. So onwards we go in recovering her legacy. Thanks. And Amy, if you'd like to finish with the final slide, please. So there's our links and we'll be sending those to you in the PowerPoint. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anna. That was brilliant. Lovely. Thank, Thank you, you, Anna. Now we are going to move to our second speaker and I believe Amy's just going to be spotlighting her. Um, that's Director Lil Warren. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for everyone coming out tonight or staying in tonight. And thank you, Anna, uh, for that great talk. Before I start, I would really highly recommend the app. I've done it live as part of the Stoke Newington Literary Festival with a big, big group of our participants and volunteers. And I've also done it sitting in the house to remind myself how good it is. So thanks, Anna. That was great. So I'm here tonight. Um, I may repeat some of what Anna has said because what she's told us already about Mary Wollstonecraft uh, is what ignited the excitement and participation in a project that uh, I've been part of for the past two years. So I work with a collective of artists, filmmakers, theatre practitioners we're based in Hackney and we're called Unity Arts and for the past 12 years we've been delivering research projects and other projects and our most recent project that we were funded for by the National Lottery Heritage Fund was called Blue Circle of Descent and it started in January 2019 and I was made responsible for the Wollstonecraft segment of that. So we were looking at the life and legacy and work of Mary Wollstonecraft, the Salonier Elizabeth Montagu, they never met, and the Blue Stocking Society generally. Now it was a no-brainer for me to take care of uh, the Wollstonecraft segment, which we uh, called Hackney Descent, because I live around the corner to Newington Green, uh, like Anna, I was inspired by the Stewie stencil here, which we can all see, that used to be on the side of the meeting house. And hopefully that Amy can tell us when that's going back. Everyone asks me and I go, I don't know, ask Amy. Um, and obviously I used to see the banner before the, the uh, refurb of the birth of feminism. Now, Mary Wollstonecraft to engage with the community was an easy sell because she was a Londoner. Now I know Anna's already told us she traveled the world, she had a world view, but what was important and I think why we had such a lot of uptake um, from all parts of the community was because she was a Londoner. She was born in Spitalfield, she had a school, Newington Green, she worshiped and dissented there she is, um, a memorial to her is in St Pancras Old Church in King's Cross. And uh, luckily for us, she lived in Hoxton for a while. So we made a very lovely partnership with Hoxton Hall Participation Team. I'd already had a relationship with them. So I knew some of those young people from when they were seven. And now I'm going into Hoxton Hall and they're now 12, but they're at like three foot taller than me. It's, it was pretty staggering to be the shortest person in the room. And we spent with them a week um, looking at dissent, 
a lot of people didn't really know. They thought dissent meant rioting. Um, we looked at debate. And what was interesting in the room was that rehearsal room practice and discipline, which is uh, be quiet when other people are talking, everyone has a point of view, and respect the space, um, encouraged discipline within debate. So there was no shouting, no raising of voices, people put their hands up. We also worked with a slam poet, Joel Taylor, who was very interested in poetry being used as a tool of dissent. And she worked with the over 18s. That was a, that was a difficult one because you have to be careful um, when you're working with poetry. It really scrapes across old wounds and it, it works on a very, very uh, deep level. And as Joel said, writing poetry is an act of courage and performing poetry is an act of war. So those people new to writing poetry were mega courageous because not only did they write that poetry in those sessions and some of it startlingly powerful, they performed it um, at Dr. Johnson's house, which is a beautiful Georgian building just off Fleet Street, around the back of Cheddar Cheese there. I would highly recommend that visit when we are allowed to go and visit. Uh, places of interest again don't know how long that's going to be so Hackney Descent Walsoncraft we had to move across the ground pretty quickly in 2019 because it was as Anna has already mentioned it was the anniversary of the uh, birth of the mother of feminism and with Anna's support Newton Green Alliance um, the new unity uh, new into Green Users Group, Mary on the Green. We um, put together two outside events on the Green. The first one, because we didn't want to do our big event to clash with Anna's event at St Pancras Old Church. And we kind of linked up on that day as well. Um, the first event was a colouring in session and a birthday party for Wollstonecraft. Our papers flew everywhere. We got soaked, we were freezing. So we actually all ended up in the pub uh, colouring in and um, started what turned into a big installation piece called Hackney Heroin, um, which really just started because we were rained off of the green. And then the next day on the 28th, we had the Young Dissenters Choir who sang songs of dissent. We had a participant from Hackney Pirate, the literacy programme, reading from Wollstonecraft's children's stories. We had a lovely talk um, from Professor Anna Birch, and we had a great big cake. We lit candles and um, we recruited for, um, recruited for the project. So for us, that was a huge success. And I really like working outside. I really like site-specific work, it enriches it and people buy into it. I mean, as Anna's mentioned, Stewie gave us his permission, gave Unity Arts permission to use his stencil as a promotional tool and later on as an um, installation piece. And his documentary, which you can find on YouTube, I'll just interject here. I'm very low tech. I will be showing you everything like vision on. Oh, I'm showing my age there. I'll be showing you everything. But after the um, after the talk and we've had our Q&A, Amy's getting a, a document together and all our links and everything I've referred to here will be on there. But I have no way of doing that myself. I'm a Luddite. So um, Stuart gave us permission and we watched his documentary, which for me, fired me up even more because he said something really interesting about Mary Wollstonecraft. He said she was a punk of her time. Now I'm of the generation that remembers punk and I really got what he meant. She, as Anna's obviously already referred to, she fought everything all of it, all the time, and lived her life like that. And 
to share with people that know nothing about her. Oh, she's Mary Shelley's mum, was kind of as far as we got with a lot of our participants. But be able to share how brave she was, how audacious she was, and how vast her thinking was, was a treat. And I think we've inspired a lot of people um, to continue uh, research and investigation into Mary Wollstonecraft. Now, we're still in 2019 here, and we're still doing Mary Wollstonecraft. And in September, we did an event at St. Pancras Old Church to commemorate her passing and laid flowers on the memorial there. We thought, this is all going very well. Everyone's coming, everyone's asking questions, everyone's jumping on board the project. And then in November, we had the good fortune to interview Anna Birch in her home. And she gave a fantastic interview to one of our young researchers who was very interested in being a travel writer. So was focusing quite a lot on um, how did Mary travel with a baby? What were the uh, constrictions of moving around in those clothes and getting on and off ships and all of that? So we're, it's all going swimmingly. We're great. We've done five or six events, we've made a film, we've had some workshops. Christmas, lovely. So we get to January. So the second half of our project has been conducted completely in lockdown and during a pandemic with some very vulnerable participants, a lot of them shielding. And sadly for us as a group, we lost some of our volunteers and participants to COVID um, during that year. Um, and obviously there's a lot of struggles with people being alone and at home. So we had to, as Luddites, we had to very quickly adapt to the new playing field. And we, made a lockdown activity pack, which Newington Green Meeting House shared as part of their Wollstonecraft celebrations in April. And we thought, you know what? We just got to keep on going. It's going to stop at some point. At some point, we're going to be able to share this work with people. So we carried on colouring in. We carried on researching. And we had a brilliant opportunity offered to us by Newington Green Meeting House to do an installation called Vindication, which was our participants' responses to the life, times and work of Mary Wollstonecraft. And you can find that also online. Because of the lockdown, the work and the responses were, I would say, very uh, intense, very detailed, and um, very deep. So we actually produced too much stuff for the, to go in the Mary Wollstonecraft room. It was so much work produced because people anchored in working on a project during lockdown. The young people unfortunately had to rope in their parents because they had a really rough ride of it with schoolwork and all of that, but they still produced stuff. And in our lockdown activity pack, we did send these out. We went around and collected them all. We had about a hundred hanging in Newton Green Meeting House. We laminated them and put them all up. And the predominant feedback from us continuing to deliver the project in lockdown was one of hope and um also an opportunity to enjoy research online and otherwise. So going forward, um, we kind of thought, well, what are we going to do now? We were offered Dr. Johnson's house to take the exhibition there and it, we put it in. <laughs> we put it in in November in that tiny little window that we had and then Oof, everything changed again. So Hackney Heroine, which was made, half of it made um, during lockdown, is sitting off Fleet Street at the moment and no one can get to it. But we have been assured 
by uh, Dr. Johnson's as soon as they can open to the public. Um, we can have an exhibition there and they are going to ask to keep it for a month. So all our participants are very, very happy that that just wasn't thrown away and that's the end of that because of lockdown. So we get to a point in our project where, well, what are we going to do now? So we've got to work online and we circled back round to Hackney Descent and produced this book called Hackney Descent. It's available, I've got hard copies and uh, here in my house, uh, which we can send out. And we also have a PDF version online and it is full of the poems that were created during Hackney Descent in 2019 and additional responses from taking part in the project, including researching, vindication, etc. This cover was made by Keris Davis, um, who was part of Hackney uh, Descent, Hoxton Hall Youth Theatre section of the project. And as soon as we saw it, it was the first one she did. And as soon as we saw it, we were right, we're having that. We're having that for a cover of something. It's so good. And all the way through the project, we've had the support of Stewie. He's kept in touch with us. He loves this, absolutely loves it. I mean, um, to be able to engage with the younger people via Stewie, it kind of did all the work for me, really, because he uh, was a disciple of um, Black Rat in Paris, who was before Banksy, and it was something they could get their heads around. It was a response to Wollstonecraft. They could really understood and could get their head around and really admired him as an artist. If I may... Um, I've got them, my really bad glasses. I'm now down to one pair of glasses, everybody. Um, I'll try and read this poem. Have Sorry, I read out... one sec? Yeah, before you uh, read that out, Rona, did you want to mention something? You've got your hand up. I just wanted to know if the book was commercially available on the website. It's free. It's free on the website That's... and it's free in hard copy. Right, and it's the Unity Arts website, yeah? Yeah, so if you email, if you'd like a hard copy, Rona, if you just email us, we'll put, put it in the post to you. If you live in Hackney, I'll put it in your door on my bike, <laughs> on my hour allowed exercise on my bike. I've delivered yeah, a lot of these I'm by in, hand. I'm in Wellington, so I'll, I'll, I'll email you and you can, yeah, okay, thank All you. All right, my love, I'll, I'll post it to you. Yeah, so this is free, everyone. It's absolutely lovely. Um, this is possibly one of... If you can see it, that's just we included as many of those um, pieces of work from our community as we could in the book. And I don't know if you can see behind me. Um, this is called Radical Threads. Um, this is possibly my favourite image of Wollstonecraft, actually. That's a fierce stare she's got there. And this was made for vindication. It hasn't been included in the Dr Johnson's because... Um, a Wollstonecraft fan in Birmingham has asked if she can have it. And we said, of course. Um, so Shanksy made that for vindication after seeing our film that we made called Hackney Descent, which captured all the poet performances at Dr. Johnson's and an interview with myself and Joel Taylor, all the poets and uh, some of the attendees. And this poem was written by the artist Shanksy here. And she has caught, this is a direct quote from Wollstonecraft, the title of this poem. How can a rational being be ennobled by anything that is not obtained by its own exertions? How can a rational being be ennobled by anything that is not obtained by its own exertions. A question posed by Wollstonecraft, the rattles in my noggin, like a, like a, like a, like a blues infused pinball. Yet its prismed sharp depths can lay a bolt of cool, transparent silk on the psyche. A seemingly simple question, and our answers hide in every breath, 
blink and bray. So vast her thinking, even now she is called radical. How can a rational being be ennobled by anything that is not obtained by its own exertions? All we need is this droplet from the rainstorm of her mind. We shall be released. And there are poems responding to the history of dissent throughout that book. And uh, we're very, very proud of it. And we did that in lockdown, a lot of back and forth with emails, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know if I run out of time now, Amy, am I finished? Oh, okay. Ben I'm sure. No, no, sorry. I'm sure we can give you a minute or two if there's something else you want to say. Um, I think that Wollstonecraft needs more celebration. There are a lot of women. There are a lot of organisations. There are a lot of academics. I think we need more, and I'm going to make it my business. Um, hopefully we can hook up with Anna in the future and make it my business um, for the first woman to put the idea of women's equality on the political map. Um, and we had to wait so long after she did have those thoughts until we got the vote and the fight goes on. So those are my closing thoughts. And thank you everyone for listening. Thank you so much. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, one second. Thank you. Going to, so we have a couple of minutes now, but really only a couple of minutes before we go into breakout rooms. If anyone um, has any questions for Lil and Anna, um, if you do, can you just put it in the chat and say, I would like to speak just because we've probably only got room for one or two questions. So if you've got a question, just let us know in the chat, just so that uh, people don't unmute themselves all at once. There's always this pause. <laughs> I have got a question, Amy, for you. So what what, mm -hmm. what is happening with the um, the stencil? So the Stewie um, stencil, yeah. So I'm not sure where Stewie's based. Well, actually, I think I do, and it's not in Newington Green yeah, anymore. Yeah. And so, um, so, and like you were saying, Stu is such a generous and kind artist. Anything he can do to support community work and share Wollstonecraft's legacy, you know, it's just so, so generous. Um, and uh, so he's going to come back and, right. and do it at some point. And then I think it's been stalled by lockdown and yep. not being able to travel. And also, I quite, quite like the idea of it just turning up again <laughs> like it did last time. Yeah. So we have a press release tucked away waiting for the day that an early dog walker comes <laughs> along and then tweets and then all of a sudden we'll have this. So to be honest, I, I don't know an exact date. Hopefully okay. it'll be soon. Lovely. Thank you. So we haven't had any questions. We'll wait one more minute okay. and then we will, then we'll still be in time. So any questions for, for Anna or Lil, um, but you're going to have opportunity in the breakout rooms to have a chat in a minute too. So if, um, if you don't want to speak, then that's okay. We don't know how to do the chat thing. Oh, just shout out then, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, go ahead, Maggie. Oh, right. I, well, I was interested to ask Lil about Unity Arts and how they work as a collective. Um, I think we, we work as a collective in that we delineate roles, but more than two or three people can do them. Mm -hmm. um, because of how outside of a collective works, I'm because I'm the gobby one, Maggie, I'm the point of... <laughs> I'm usually the point of contact. So they're only talking to one person because if you say to people that we work as a collective, they go, well, I don't want to speak to four people. So we make collective decisions. And because we've worked collaborated as artists and stuff, we, we kind of, we 
we've kind of got this sort of, um, we seem to have one brain now. We've been doing it so long. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have another question um, from, I think it was um, Kim. From Kim, yes. Hi, yes, that's me. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, just to say, um, as I put in the chat, um, I, I'm based in Bristol. I'm here because uh, I know Anna. Um, but I wondered if there were plans to travel the story. I mean, it's great. I think it's fantastic that you give us such a focus on your area. And I really applaud um, uh, stories that are you know, placed in their home. But then again, her story, as you say, is so big and so important. Um, do you have plans to uh, travel live aspects of her again once we have once we have freedom of movement, if you like, uh, to other parts of the of the country? Because I think there's lots of places that would welcome seeing performances around her work and so forth. Well, I know Anna take that. Anna take that. Um, uh, then um, so. Um, it's good to hear you, uh, Kim, from Bristol. And um, I know that you perform um, histories as well of uh, famous women and um, uh, one woman shows. I think it's um, one of the things that's brilliant about Wollstonecraft is that she reached out so far. So um, as a governess for an Irish family, um, she lived in, in Ireland and then she actually visited Bristol um, and Bath. So there's a whole history there that's untapped and um, lots of work to be done really in um, putting more detail on her uh, different travels to different places. And obviously those become even more lively when they travel. But I think the internet, the space time compression, the communications of the internet also really help with that. Mm. So um, we've got both, both things up our sleeves really. Great. So now we are going to go into our breakout room. So I'm just going to remove this pin. And uh, then um, Roshni is going to put us into the breakout rooms in one second. I'm just going to explain just very briefly what's going to happen. Um, we're going to be talking about two questions in this session. So each group is going to get a couple of minutes um, to talk about these questions. I'll just get these questions up. Which are here. Um, so Roshni is going to put us into small groups and um, they're going to be facilitated by the facilitators that you met earlier. So myself, Stephen, Roshni. And um, these are the questions. So the first question is, what are the different ways that her stories can be celebrated? And you don't have to worry about remembering these because your facilitators are going to have them. And um, remembering someone from the past how relevant is that today? And it's this kind of the same question, it's combined, but it looks like three, is what are the issues when you remember someone from over 250 years ago? So I'll just read them out one more time. What are the different ways that her stories can be celebrated? Mm -hmm. Remembering someone from the past, how relevant is that today? And kind of tagged on, what are the issues when you remember someone from over 250 years ago? So Roshni is gonna put us all into these lovely groups and our facilitators are gonna guide us through over the next 10 minutes to have this conversation. So we're just gonna come back quickly and give a, like a brief overview of what you discussed in your, um, in your sessions. So maybe we start with breakout room one and your representative. I think. My group was breakout one, but again, I don't ne normally pay attention to numbers. So unless anyone else says their number one, I'm going to assume. So you go for it, Eliani. Um, so for the first question, um, talking about the different ways that her stories can be celebrated. Um, we talked about how kids is really important. Um, and so Julie told us the ways that she'd been support kind of her kids learning and engaging in historical and political com political conversation which I think is really important and a lot of the time change happens throughout generation and so that's why it's really important that we engage our kids um, but also engaging ourselves in it so a lot of 
the time we kind of realize different topics are important because being brought up through engagement with younger the younger generation um and so then ourselves being able to engage in that as well um obviously thoughts positive change um and then also kind of considering who is and who isn't being celebrated a lot of people get forgotten about or just aren't really discussed um which is kind of sad because so many people would have had such a part in different histories um and a lot of the time it's the same kind of people who get discussed about and I think a lot of this has come up um more recently and how we can kind of diversify curriculums and our education um yeah and then the, um with the statue about how it's engaged both positive and negative um attraction but either way that's in conversation which is a big thing ultimately because people are engaging in that uh, and then with remembering someone from the past and how relevant that is um the issues with that are kind of what information do we have it can be quite hard to effectively represent a whole community um, and so there's a lot of diversity within communities that we don't always get covered um, within a small area and also historically um, a lot of the problems we have today um, are based on themes that we've seen in the past and people are kind of debating the same issues over and over again so a lot of people don't realize the relevance of remembering people from such a long time ago wow. and yeah that kind of summarizes it wonderful that's so comprehensive thank you um i really like the idea that change happens through generations and that's why it's so important to engage children as well that, that's really great um so okay quickly we were group two i don't know if marina wants to kick it off Hi everyone. Uh, so we were group two and um, we, we actually said a lot of the things that group one have said so well and uh, I should have taken notes because we just talked loads and I didn't write it down. Um, but we talked about how Mary Wollstonecraft through like the walk app or the event that uh, Lil and Anna did in the, in the green where there was so much cake, I really remember the cake and also the other interactive stuff. You really start to get a grasp, get a grip on how Mary Wollstonecraft was international. And I think going forward for like, um, kind of making a concrete position for her as a figurehead in like his, in history and in politics and also in moving and looking to her for guidance for moving forward. I think her international perspective of kind of travel and globalization and collaboration it essentially um, was the key. And I think that, um, uh, Rose said a really good point about the journalist Lise Doucette. Lise Doucette, who actually I I don't know. No, no. Well, but anyway, so uh, yeah, uh, we do you want to talk about that? She, well, she's a, I think she's Irish, but she's an amazing uh, journalist, if you know. But I think this representation of who we have as modern public figures that represent the. Um, meanings and beliefs and ideas that Mary Wollstonecraft had and how do we connect them and bring them back in and maybe public figures, public faces are, are a way of, um, I don't want to, we shouldn't memorialize, we should um, celebrate. So how do we celebrate these, um, these ideas and bring them forward? Mm. And Lisa Set was a, a good one. Yeah, yeah it was very really good. Um, and we also discussed, well, Sarah discussed like, how Mary Wollstonecraft is super relatable for a lot of um, people now because of her jumping around and being a mother and also a philosopher and also a writer and this whole concept yes. of doing everything at once. And obviously, unfortunately, her life got cut short. But I mean, if she was doing like, I think drawing on those things, a lot of different people from different backgrounds and different kind of identities can, can find something to which I'm sure is why people find her endearing as well. So yeah, we kind of talked about that and obviously we're kind of carrying on the conversation now. Um, but I think that was it, Roshni. I don't know if you had any other things we talked about. That's, that's brilliant. Um, I think we're going to cover a lot of the same ground in the other groups, so I'll, I'll move to group three. Thank you so much for summarising. 
Um, I'm not too sure who group three were, but um, I'll, I'll give us a little, um, yeah. give us a little um, overview of what we were talking about. Yeah. Um, so basically, we started off talking about the Mary Wollstonecraft app and um, how it's great. Uh, a great way to see things firsthand, especially during the lockdown. So I think the, the general consensus was that seeing things in real life, uh, like buildings and stuff like that, is really awe-inspiring. And you can really kind of dig into the story and, and feel a part of the, the history of it all. Um, so we think it's important to get ideas out there to a wider group of people as well, and uh, making them available in, in public spaces so that people don't have to go to libraries or anything like that. And it's a more about bringing the history to people and ideas to people. Um, yeah, so being in the space where history happened, hearing the stories of women firsthand really brings things to life. And also in question two, um, remembering someone from the past is often difficult. Uh, we only have a recollection of them and the legacy of their work. Um, we, we don't um, often get a first-hand experience of, experience of them. Um, and I think that tends to make us put our own perception on the past. Um, we might not get the full, um, the, the full ideas might not come across uh, completely. Uh, we only have an, inter an interpretation of the person and their work. Um, we have to remember that this is looking back in time and that uh, um, things were completely different back then, politics, societal views, things like that. So it's, it's not what we are used to. Nowadays, we're used to Zoom calls and things like that. So this is a completely different world that you have to go back in time and kind of place yourself in that in, in that position, so, which is quite difficult, obviously. So yeah, the, the, the 10 minutes was up quite quickly, but um, I think there were some really good points that were brought forward in, in our little talk. Can, can I just add just slightly, when we're talking about Somebody raised it really well, uh, Maggie. I don't see her now. Oh yes, there you are. Um, was about that, like in terms of public spaces, there are actually spaces where people gather anyway, like like the laundrette or a community centre or mm -hmm. a waiting room, something like that. So it's not actually, so it actually comes out of the stuffy space actually into where people's day to day lives are. What so looking at the history is day-to-day -day lives as, as as well yeah great point thank you uh are we on group four now i'm not sure um, if we're group four but um, <laughs> are, are, you, are you group four i don't know i no, don't know if it wants to go ahead you go ahead i'll i'll, I'll just crack on quickly um so for the for the first question, um, different ways that her stories can be celebrated, we said something very similar to the first group, which is um, while definitely taking the time to celebrate some of the huge feminist figures, it's also worth researching and looking into the smaller figures that maybe don't have quite as much airtime that need to be rediscovered because, you know, every little helps in this sense um, and anybody at the time when there's probably way more um, pressures to not push against the status quo. Um, anybody that took the time to do that, it really needs to be uh, recognized by future generations. Um, and we talked a lot about, um, for the second question, how relevant it is today, um, just that it's still hugely relevant. Um, it, Kim made a point that all human relationships tend to be the same, um, you know, whether it's how we communicate with each other and the power dynamics, things haven't changed massively. While we have come a long way, people are still people. Um, and we discussed how um, kind of current generations and every generation seems to think that they're the first who are kind of pushing back against this and revolting against certain institutions. Um, which is great in a lot of ways, but also you have to recognise that other people have been there before and laid the groundwork for you to continue fighting the fight. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's just not only building upon where other people have been previously, but also trying to carve out a new path and maybe a new way to, to tear down some of those walls. Thank you so much. Uh, we have two more groups left, Group 5 and 6. 
Uh, maybe I'll go ahead. Uh, we talked mostly about education and the importance of education and how the curricula now are completely not suited um, for, for what we want to teach our children. They're still, you know, very dated and we're not learning almost anything about women's uh, stories. Um, we also talked about um, the fact that uh, women need to be included in positions of power uh, and then promote other women to positions of power. Uh, we talked about the power of performance and theater and bringing the stories to life and uh, getting them to people's hearts um, as, as a way to really lodge, lodge them in, in people's minds and, and hearts. Um, yeah, and we didn't get really to the second question. And third question, uh, we said that it's important who you rem remember and that we choose them um, not based on, uh, for example, the wealth they accum accumulated, uh, but which is then based on the good that they've done and um, and how also um, government plays a role with grants that it gives uh, with money that, that need to be spent on remembering the people like uh, building monuments and statues. I think that's kind of it. That's really excellent points. Um... Yeah, a lot to think about. Yeah, think about education and yeah, where government money goes. Um, okay, finally, uh, we're running a bit over. I'm so sorry, guys. Just have a recap from group six, please. Uh, yeah, that's me. Um, I would, I did, I forgot to nominate someone. Stephen, do you fancy maybe recapping what we did in group six? Stephen? <laughs> I'll find you if you... Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, um, Stephen. Yeah. Um, well, we started off with question one, and actually someone, you made a point, I think, about the importance of libraries, having a library of, of uh, about Mary, a, a library for Mary, which was well received as a, as a concept. Um, me, um, let me think. Um, then Mary then talked about um, the historic, the difficulties of of using historical figures for now, as it were, and how you move from one to the other. Um, we all kind of acknowledge that in her thirty eight years, she'd done an awful lot, and that was quite surprised to learn that she was only 38 when she died. Um, and um, I had the idea about saying, well, Mary Wollstonecraft was, is a person who is a human being the same as we are now, uh, in the same way that uh, someone said earlier about people's relationships mm. being the same. She, and um, and that it's important to recognise what people are doing, what everybody's doing, rather than just going for, uh, well, I'd use the word rulers. Um, and, and But there's probably more. I'm sure there was more, Amy. I wasn't really listening. No, I think you summed that up beautifully. I think it ended with a very positive note, which was that, you know, Mary was amazing but also was a person and we're people and we can do those things and we can work together and and make those kind of changes too and she did so much in such a short short space thank you Stephen I really put you on the spot that's all right <laughs> I think that's that's everyone um these are really great um conversations and there was like really lots of like um really uh, rich kind of conversation that came out that I've taken some notes on so thank you everyone and we hope that you'll all join us at the next session which is the same time next week well actually it starts at eight we started a little bit early to set the rules and that we're going to use those rules going forward so that will save us a bit of time um next week we are joined we're talking about um women and child care and caring responsibilities that's the theme of next week We've got two speakers. Um, the first speaker is Shade Ete, who is a Hackney councillor and mother of four. And um, she's going to be talking about 
and um, bringing up her children as a single parent and working and studying and being a hackney counsellor and then we have uh, my friend um from back home who's a lady called jakina who um had a child and left work as a nurse to look for her child um i look after her child full time but has now recently in the pandemic made the decision to go back to work and understanding a bit about that and some of the guilt and some of the the, fa the factors that went into kind of making those decisions um and we will send you an email um, with the PowerPoint and further reading. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Roshni, is there anything you'd like to say before we finish? Um, well, thank you to everyone to, for participating. And it was like really, really amazing to kind of hear what all your thoughts and, you know, um, and, and to our speakers as well, to Anna and Lil. Thank you so much for um, thank coming you, on Anna this and evening. Lil. And, yeah, and, and if you can't make it next week, please do feel drop uh, to feel free to drop in any other week because our sessions are developed so that you can just drop in as, as you want. But we have some really, really exciting speakers coming up. But thank you everyone so much for coming and making this a successful first event. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you as well. Thank you for organizing. Yeah, you smell oh, thank you. Our pleasure. Well done, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.